everyone. Um, thanks for joining me for this afternoon's webinar um, entitled Creating Transparency and Trust in Media. Um, my name is David Angel. I'm General Manager and Head of Media at Trinity P3. And prior to joining Trinity P3, I spent 15 years in media agencies here in the UK, as well as a stint client side. Um, I've lived and worked in the Australian market for about eight years now. So. To get to a space where I'm talking to you about how to generate improvement via the creation of trust and transparency in your, in your media agency relationship, I want to first confront two areas. Um, first, the general perception of media agencies in the market, and second, the more nuanced reality that exists behind the headlines. Um, by gripping and confronting these areas, we can get to what the challenges are, and, and therefore what approaches, behaviours and actions are required in order to improve things. The framework that defines those approaches, behaviours and actions is what I call the four C's. Um, consultative, compliant, commercial and collaborative. And we'll circle back and talk about them in a, in a, few, uh, in a few minutes time. But before I do so, I'd like to start by framing this session in the right context. The recent media furore around media agencies has driven us all as, as commentators to a space that we seem to love. It's the crisis space. And it's, it's human nature, we tend to love it when things get dramatic and there's one reason why over the past 12 months from the nucleus of a relatively junior group of individuals making mistakes or fudging accidentally or not some numbers on a TV personalities document, from that nucleus there's developed a huge mushroom cloud of headlines, reports, pitches and renewed feverish speculation surrounding media agency transparency. Now like I said I've, I've been in and around media agencies for, for 15 years. Um, and for reasons I've never, never fully understood, media agencies do often seem to be relatively highly disliked within the industry. There's a, in some areas an, a, an insidious lack of respect for what media agencies do, or at least what they claim to do. Um, there's a, di a dichotomy between the importance of a media agency's primary role, which is handling millions of dollars in, in client funds, and the lack of respect for the people actually doing the job. And the view remains in some quarters that the default setting of all media agencies is to smoothly rip off their clients. And from that perspective, it's kind of, they, they, they sort of the estate agents of the marketing services industry, the, 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 the ones that we love to hate. Don't get me wrong in any of this. There's definitely a lot that's wrong with media agencies, but there's a lot that's good as well. And it's fair to say that this dynamic is the same for pretty much every business category on the planet. Now I've said it before and I'll say it again, the majority of individuals I've worked with in media agencies have a genuine desire to do well for their clients and to do good business for their employers. Harness those organisations in the right way and you can establish great trusted relationships and I know that because I've been there. So the aim of this webinar today is not to rake over the coals of ABBs and backhanders and number fudging. The aim of today is much more positive, is to suggest some ways in which the best that exists in great media agencies can be instilled and developed and harnessed by you as marketing clients for your own benefit, of course, as well as for the benefit of the agency itself. I'm going to basically talk to you about what you should want in a media agency and how you can get it. So let's think about some perspective. There is no doubt that media agencies have had to evolve, like most things, of course. And, but I'd argue that the scope of that change has been relatively extreme and it continues to accelerate. Um, looking at the pictures on this chart from Mad Men's Harry Crane talking about buying spots in the 60s to the hard-edged buyer of the 80s and early 90s, media agencies are now positioning themselves as precision strategists, as programmatic traders, as producers of content, um, as having data and analytics, tools and expertise amongst many other things. There is a constant push uh, to diversify as a mix of globalization, commoditization, competition, diversification and automation have all profoundly impacted the way in which agencies operate. We all know how much the media landscape is fragmenting, how much marketing as a discipline is changing. The biggest challenge faced by the agencies, in my opinion, is to truly satisfy the now, the next and the later at the same time. Again, they aren't unique in this challenge, but it's particularly pronounced in this area due to the amount of chatter about the next big thing that is such a central feature of our, of our industry. The reality is that media agencies, no matter how digitized or strategic they proclaim themselves to be, are still buying a lot of television. And their bread and butter remains in paid media trading. And therefore agencies need to retain their staff in traditional roles and at the same time retrain them in new disciplines, invest ahead of the curve by effect, uh, attracting new skill sets from outside of the industry and develop new product suites, whilst all at the same time maintaining cost compliance and profitability. So that causes stress 
And it should come as no surprise that staff churn in media agencies is, is a big problem in this market. In the middle of all this turmoil is the often unwilling client, is the, the marketer, you, the marketers. Relationships inevitably can suffer um, under intense change. Media entity service models are now so complex that sometimes it's difficult to see the wood for the trees and it can feel like the agency is prioritising shiny new capabilities over getting the basics right. And the basics, as I've said, are still what accounts for most of your budget. And this is particularly acute when the agency seems to be on a mission to sell in the new, new revenue streams. Having said that, marketers often don't give enough time, respect or empathy to the agency trying to educate them in something that might just be useful. So the empathy on both sides of this process of enlightenment can be really poor. Um, and exacerbating this, when agencies are actually given the opportunity to communicate, they often do a terrible job. Um, further adding to this sense of kind of opaque dark art, which extends into structure and process and technology and ultimately remuneration. You know, just what are they talking about? And why are they trying to sell it to me? Agencies don't get that right a lot. Contractual agreements are often years out of date. You know, no one on the client side really has the skills often to unpick some of the less transparent or faster shifting details that would allow a move away from the unspecified revenue streams and derivative performance measures that, that create a barrier to change and create a barrier to agnostic channel planning and create a barrier to trust and transparency. The areas between media agencies and other disciplines continue to blur. There can be intense irritation on the client side caused by multiple competing agencies all with their own ideas on strategy and implementation of your campaign. And all of this ultimately leads to a lingering sense of over-promise and under-delivery. And my view is that over-promise and under-delivery on the media agency side is more commonly felt amongst marketers now than, than for many, many years. And that, of course, ultimately contributes to a, to a, to a vicious cycle. Well, as getting the best out of your media agency and striving to reduce some of these challenges is of course a two-way street. Media agencies are filled with smart people who are often as frustrated as you are um, at, at, at what they perceive as the barriers put in their way by the clients, barriers that prevent great relationships and actual change to media strategy or media trading from happening. Now, of course there are great relationships that do exist right now. Of course it's not all bad. There are some fantastic clients out there. There are some great media agencies and the reverse. But for the purposes of today, if your media agency is the relationship is struggling for any reason or you need to improve it, it's worth spending some time considering these two simple, really simple things. Number one, regardless of what you're marketing or what your strategy is, if you're paying a media agency, what should you want? You know, mismanaged relationships can often really work to cloud the true potential of a media agency. Now, I believe that there's improvement waiting to be unlocked in almost every media agency relationship. So when you've worked out what you should want, consider what, short of simply pitching the business, can you do to get it? How can you get it? At the end of the day, there are a thousand ways, uh, really, to describe what you should want out of a great media agency, but ultimately it boils down to what I'm terming the four C's, um, to improving trust and transparency. Number one, consultative. You want an agency of thought leaders. You want an, an agency of educators, of confidants, of sounding boards, of people who have the right balance of focus between the reality of now and the possibility of the future. Compliant. You want an agency with a clear structure, with clarity and with flexibility in its dealings with you. An agency willing to stand up and be counted against its own performance and its contribution to yours. More than that, you want an agency prepared to be a part of driving best practice in the industry to which it belongs. Commercial, you want an agency that can handle itself, that trades with the right balance of confidence, assertive power and knowledge, both with you and with um, network sales partners. You want an agency who can get the job done when the rubber hits the road. You need an agency and want an agency who is not necessarily the cheapest, but the best that you can buy into and who therefore buys into you. And collaborative, you want an agency adaptable enough to thread itself through your organisation across all touch points and that of your other agency suppliers with the appropriate amount of grace and care and conviction. Okay, that's great, but how does that work from an actual skill set perspective? Putting our four C's on a quadrant, as you can see on the chart here, allows us to map the relevant agency capabilities and we're going to take this one quadrant at a time. In the consultative compliant quadrant sits flexibility and remuneration, willing educators and KPI commitment. Flex in remuneration. If agencies are really trying to adapt themselves in, in terms of service, they need to adapt their payment structures. Um, for all but the most high-bound commission-based rem remuneration is simply no longer appropriate. Um, 
You should want an agency that is, that, that, that's open and willing to work with you in discussing performance-based incentive structures that will help to establish a business partner mentality. Willing educators, there is so much that agencies can educate you on. And you want an agency that can educate you, but in your own language, at your own pace, that has an instinctive understanding of the level of detail required and the audience that it's talking to. And is able to bring the different teams within its own structure together so that you can properly understand the way things actually work. And finally, KPI commitment. It's easy to agree KPIs up front and then either forget about them or fail to properly implement them. You should want an agency who understands the power of a simple, strong set of KPIs that go beyond just task delivery and extend into core areas of agency performance and influence. And this is linked to flex and remuneration. You want the agency prepared to put a financial stake against its own performance. To mutual benefit. In the second quadrant here, um, consultative collaborative quadrants sit thought leading practitioners, organisational adaptability and powerful pivots. Thought leading practitioners is not just about the CEO writing opinion pieces. You should want the agency aware all of the functional leads across areas like strategy, trading, implementation, digital, data and the managers in those teams are sufficiently plugged into the market that they're able to lead your teams where necessary. Thought, thought leadership doesn't just apply to new and emerging areas of agency practice. You, you should want to work with the agency who, who recognises the value of maintaining strong skill sets in traditional areas and is therefore balancing the now, the next and the later without detriment to your actual advertising spend. And organisational adaptability, you should want an agency fully outside of its own ivory tower and that's a common problem. You, you know, the agency that's willing to able to and able to mould itself around you rather than you around it. And sometimes that might mean adapting or deferring its own way of expressing itself to yours or working together to achieve the right organisational selling um, beyond marketing. Um, and the agency that recognises that progressive marketing and the selling of new marketing concepts do not begin and end with its own strategic wheel can be a great thing to work with. And that cliched notion of the agency as the extension of the marketing team is still relevant in that context. Um, albeit not as achieved as much as it could be probably. And powerful pivots, this is about the skill of account leadership, your, your business director or your client service director. Those, that skill is quite amorphous, it's not always as apparent as those demonstrated by the functional leads in a media agency, yet it is absolutely crucial to you um, from, a, from a performance perspective, nothing else, now more so than ever. You, know, you should want to work with an agency that places extremely high value on selecting the right individual in this role for you and your business. And it is, much, it is as much a chemistry thing as it is a skill set thing. The modern day account lead acts as a pivot between different functions internally, between those functions and different points of your marketing team and your broader organisation, and between the media agency and other suppliers. You should want to work with an account lead ultimately who can loosen the tie with you. You know, lose the corporate talk to you on a level about the challenges and how to solve them and who's prepared to stand up and, and take responsibility when things go wrong rather than someone who trots out the corporate lines. These people generally have high empathy, strong integrity, they know their remit, they have high EQ, they play within the right boundaries but are able to flex within them and you want someone with a gravitas to be able to do that and sit on your senior team with a wide ranging knowledge of industry issues, who's, you know, someone who's able to galvanise various people to a shared goal developed with you. And you know, ultimately, you want someone who, professionally speaking, has your back. Um, these people aren't always easy to find, and um, relationships as strong as the one I've just described naturally take a lot of time to develop. But in terms of unlocking agency potential and increasing trust and transparency, they can make a fundamental difference to overall performance. In the compliant commercial quadrant, we've got in industry practice adherence, contractual clarity, and trading gravitas. And we think about industry practice adherence at the senior level, representation and, and compliance with bodies such as the MFA, yeah, of course it's important for obvious reasons. And across the functional departments, beyond that, you should want to work with the agency who can demonstrate its commitment to um, integrity and diligence in practice. And there are lots of examples, that, you know, a simple example right now is within digital trading. So the agency that ensures that it is up to date with the protective measures taken to protect your brand against appearance in inappropriate digital environments, for example. The agency that is rigorous in that and has up-to-date checking uh, systems, white hat and black hat systems. The systems, the technology, the tools that the agency uses are also more broadly a sign of strong adherence to best practice. But the reality is, and I can tell you from experience, sometimes those tools are shouted about but not often used in reality. You need to work with the agency who can actually prove the use of the various tools that you're paying for and how useful they are to you. Um, and your business. Contractual clarity, you should want to work with the agency prepared to enter into a mutually beneficial yet transparent contract with you. And I would like to caveat here. 
that transparency is a relative term. You know, there's been a lot about media anti-transparency and a lot about, oh, well, they're not completely transparent, therefore there's something wrong. No business is completely transparent about their internal operation. So those who state that the media entities need to be completely tra transparent are, in my view, unfair. But having said that, you should at least be comfortable and knowledgeable about how, trans how transparent your agency is prepared to be with you. And the agency should be open about that. You know, the way the contract is structured can make a big difference to your understanding of that. And often you'll need third party help to identify areas of improvement to a media agency contract. But the, you know, at the end of the day, the willingness demonstrated by your existing agency to modernise or alter the contract or even to explain it to you properly is showing their own boundaries with regard to transparency is a key indicator when deciding whether or not to make a change, sign a contract or accept that this agency is the right agency for you. And finally in this quadrant, trading gravitas, look, I'll be honest, we are touching here on ABBs slightly. Um, we can't identify the exact extent of AB, ABB deals and agencies. We know that they exist in places, WPP have come out, and, or Group M rather, have come out and admitted that they have used them. But, you know, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I know exactly what AB deals are in which agency. The amount you care about arbitrage in agencies, which is ultimately what ABBs is about, is an individual matter. But as a general rule, you should want to work with the agency able to offer you a degree of reassurance via right to audit or similar. You now be wary of signing contract addendums in areas such as programmatic trading if those addendums obscure your right to financial clarity. And you should at least be able to have an open dialogue with your agency about why it's structured like that if that's the case. And you know, at the end of the day, you should also want to work with the agency who's willing to include you in dialogue or negotiation directly with sales suppliers or networks where appropriate. So these are the areas where agencies can and do uh, become more transparent. In the collaborative commercial quadrant, we have strategic standouts, executional excellence, and measure, evolve, measure, learn, evolve, which is a bit long, but never mind. Um, strategic standouts, the best agencies, when given the opportunity, they think about strategy commercially and pragmatically, not just in terms of media first ideas or award winners. They think about strategy collaboratively from the perspective of ensuring that uh, their approach gels with an overall position or with the work of another agency. And they think about strategy creatively, wiring it into consumer insight. Now this approach should really extend through the generation of media or comm strategy, um, right through to the channel planning paid owned and earned that supports whatever the strategic proposition is. Executional excellence, you should want to work with the agency who has the commercial and collaborative ability to match its great strategy with flawless execution. Execution is probably the least exciting, the least recognised, yet the hardest and most important part of any campaign. And it's where so many agency promises fall over. And finally, measure, evolve, measure, learn, evolve. Look, when it comes to post-campaign or even through campaign, you should want to work with the agency that gets under the skin of campaign performance with you and learns from it and actions that learning. Working in a therefore a virtual cycle of measurement, evolution and learning. And finally, in the centre of everything, an agency approach that's defined by agnostic transparency and look, pretty much everything I've talked to here, that's the, our building blocks to this kind of holy grail of agency approach and transparency. A healthy agency relationship should involve complete agnosticism of thought wherever possible. As a simple example, if the correct answer to a strategic brief lies away from paid media or even away from the agency itself, the agency should be telling you this. They should be playing the bigger game. That principle of agnostic transparency should permeate pretty much every communication between you and that agency. It's one of the reasons why your powerful pivot is so important. You should want to work with the agency that gives you most confidence in that approach. And that confidence is gained through pretty much everything on this chart. The strength of the contract, the rent structure, the skill set, the ability of the account leads, in the drive to fulfill KPIs, the importance placed on measurement. So, there's a desired agency picture based around the four C's. You know, that would be, a, in my view, a pretty great um, agency to work with. So if that's what you want, okay, how can you get it? The simplest way, in my view, to frame your thoughts around how you get what you want from the agencies is to apply the same structure to yourself and create a virtuous circle. We don't need to complicate anything. Um, the four C's work both ways around. Let me be clear, I guess, based on, on, on my own experience. Master-servant mentality will not drive the best out of your relationship. It does exist in client agency relationships. It will not drive the best out of your relationships in any way. And it won't, particularly, won't drive trust and transparency. That doesn't mean you aren't able to lead. 
it means that you should lead as you'd like to be led. And if you're adhering to the four C's, it will make it easier and more logical for your agency to do so, which will make it easier for you both to move forward. And sharing this, you, we're basically talking about sharing the same value system that will generate a tighter relationship. So, to consider how this works in practice, let's talk about a number of behaviours, approaches and actions that you can take and from, from the marketer side or the client side to become full C compliant. Let's start with consultative. Um, be completely clear about the agency scope and remit. Set up a roster structure and agree set times for the agency to talk to you about new services. It's amazing how often this isn't done. Agencies are full of intelligent and competitive animals and the whole industry is soaked in competition. You know, just look at the pitching process, look at the multitude of award ceremonies, just two demonstrable outward facing examples of the culture. Adding fuel to that fire, the, the areas between different types of agency on your roster continue to blur. So media agencies, like any other type of agency, are under pressure not only to grow organic revenue streams, but also to future prison themselves, guard against pitch threat, exploit new business um, via the use of diversified case studies, all of these things. Some media agency groups have service wheel structures against which account leads are actively targeted in terms of revenue gain. All of these dynamics means potential headaches that you don't need. You know, intra-agency squabbling, continuous hard sell, muddy strategies. You know, not to mention a feeling that every recommendation may have an ulterior motive that has nothing to do with doing the best thing for your business. So to overcome this, you do need to structure a bit and you need to lead a bit. The agency needs to be completely clear from day one about what is and what is not in its remit. And more importantly, the types of behavior regarded as acceptable and those that are not. And a good way to get to this is to set up a roster structure that enables such leadership to take place across the agency group, the multi-agency group. So examples of that include a holding company structure. So all of the agencies would be part of the same holding company. So they have a business relationship and then one you have one central lead coordinating all those agency efforts. Or you can take a strategic group structure. So all the agencies are from different holding companies, but you form a small ELT with representatives from each agency which meets regularly with you to direct strategy and resolve the bigger challenges. It can also be useful to recognize uh, the fact that media agencies need to grow their business, but do it on your terms. You know, give, give your agency some opportunity by setting the time to talk to you about new services. And this way you can prepare for such a session without feeling hard sold and guard against the agency feeling that you're simply shutting it out. Task your agency with opening the black boxes of media. Look, admit, just admit what you don't understand. And you know, be willing to prioritize regular education and show a genuine interest. If, if you want your agency to open up to you, you need to open up to it. It's critical in any consultative relationship that the knowledge gaps of both parties are established and dealt with. And in the case of the media agency, there is, in my experience, a fundamental lack of understanding on the client side across some key areas. Um, I could list lots of them, you know, programmatic trading is probably the most obvious example. Agencies have certainly been guilty of putting black boxes of mystery around things like programmatic trading, and they have made money from that. And this is now changing them. You know, as the landscape evolves, the issues of transparency become more public and the competition grows, that's changing. Um, some agencies are changing their structure, starting to renounce the service wheel approach, which does create a black box mentality anyway, and operate a bit more seamlessly. However, regardless of any of that, most or at least all good agencies would happily take the time to explain more if only the client would ask for it. And look, sometimes, yes, of course the agency needs to be more proactive, but sometimes the client just needs to be honest about a knowledge gap and work with the agency to correct it. And please, when you do have an education session or work shadowing session or whatever it is that you agree on, please show genuine interest in application. There have been many times in my career when the agency team has worked hard to prepare something like this, only for the client team to turn up late or not at all, sit on their mobiles, appear disinterested, and frankly above it all. And that's just not just me giving rubbish training. You know, my experiences are backed by those I talk to on the agency side. And look, you know, agencies sometimes aren't even paid for the work they do in this space. So if you need to be educated and you want your agency to come to you on that, let them educate you. Exchange your views in return, make it consultative, and insist on the, on the right behaviours within that from your own team. I can't tell you how motivating and empowering it is for, you know, as a, as a media and as an ex-media agency person, in a media agency team to feel that they are genuinely working with a client to co-create something that will deliver better results. I also can't tell you how many times people on both sides of the relationship talk about co-creation, but are, are in fact moving at completely different paces, often for completely the wrong reasons. 
The most common challenge is understanding where you actually are on a journey and what is realistically achievable. And that can be reflected in how you're strategizing, how you're briefing, how you're setting goals. You know, just like anything, if the communication isn't there or the goals are unachievable, you're setting yourself up and your agency up for failure. So work with your senior agency team to define your journey. Segment it so that everyone can see where they're headed. Put some rest stops in. You know, make it visionary, make it achievable. This is another area where so many clients and agencies talk the talk, but simply don't walk the walk. You know, agencies often feel the pressure in, in media to do something completely different. Sometimes that pressure is completely self-reflected and, and their own fault. Sometimes it comes from clients who aren't sure of exactly what it is they want or who brief inaccurately. Um, often there's a lot of talk, but when it comes to the crunch, no action is taken, no real change in strategy occurs because the marketer backs away from it, from what he or she sees as an unacceptable level of risk. Or the agency just hasn't validated it properly, hasn't provided the right ammunition for the idea to be sold internally, hasn't moulded itself around what you need internally to sell something in. If you're unable to take risks with your media agency, like you know, abandoning television or ramping up content or whatever it is it may be, then be clear about it with your agency and why and discuss it. Find the, that right balance in briefing between asking for what's required without being directed whilst leaving enough room for some evolution. But don't write a brief that says you must flip everything on its head if you know there's no real possibility of such an approach actually happening. So the point here is really to try and build in an element of evolution into your journey with the agency and brief clearly on the parameters of what constitutes acceptable risk. And that way, you're going to get better solutions from your agency. Your agency's not going to waste time and effort trying to build something that can't be built, and you'll both, frankly, be far less frustrated. So let's talk about some um, key compliant behaviours. Um, contract. I mean, the pe contract has been peppered through this, but you know, understand your contract. Make it future-proofed wherever possible. Meet your agency contracts like the industry are becoming more complex to manage because there are just simply more elements to consider. And, you know, often in my experience, media agency contracts are so out of date, they're just not applied and they're not adequate, which of course leads to misunderstanding and accusations and lack of clarity when the contract finally is pulled out of the drawer, often by a procurement lead, uh, which is not good for anyone. And your contract, amongst many other things, should provide you with clear understanding of agency revenue streams, including rate car for diversified elements, and maybe even elements that you don't currently use but you might use in the future. It should contain a clear and up-to-date remit of services provided, it should outline FTE structure and named individuals, it should provide a right to audit, it should write, allow for regular cost review, it should do lots and lots of things. You should be in a position to understand as much as you can about how transparent your agency is prepared to be, as we've said, and push hard for that transparency to be not just in the contract, to be actively, but to be actively reviewed as part of um, a due diligence process. Pay fairly, you know, pay on time. I, you know, basic business etiquette, but there are a number of companies who don't pay fairly. And I, I certainly don't suggest that marketers should pay over the odds, um, but at the same time there's a balance between getting the best cost and paying to a level commensurate with what a business can bear. Um, of course, the commoditization of the industry is at least partly the fault of the agencies, and an agency who signs a substandard remuneration or tries to buy the business has itself to blame. But having said that, they are watch outs for you, they're not good things. Extracting the best value from your agency does not equate to lowest cost nor does it lead to trust and transparency. Where bad practice has existed in, in these areas, you know, in my experience, it, it exists for a number of reasons, but three spring to mind. First, it's, it's an expression of the master-servant dynamic, and it's a recognition of the fact that in a commoditized industry, the agency needs the client more than the client needs the agency, um, which is fundamentally unhealthy. Second, there's this, and I've had this from a couple of people, there's, there's a couple of clients, I should say, there's this sort of hazy perception that uh, a service-based proposition doesn't really have as much cash flow pressure as other forms of business, um, so don't, don't worry about paying on time. That's, of course, patently untrue. And third, there's this, there is a pervasive view in some areas, not with everyone, but in some areas that agencies are all fat cats creaming profit. Just, you know, my, my suggestion here is, is, is think carefully about what you actually want from your media agency relationship. When I've been working with Trinity P3, we comprehensively benchmark agency remuneration models all the time and we will not hesitate to call out those agencies we view as too cheap. And when you do pay the agency, please establish sensible credit terms. You know, I've, I've seen hundred, I've seen agencies force into 120 day payment terms before now, which frankly, that's just not acceptable to any business. So please pay on time and play in a, re play in a reasonable way. Performance incentive clauses we've talked about a bit um, on the agency side, they can work really well to generate optimal performance if they're set up right and if they're actually adhered to. And to be fair, in this area, in my experience, most clients will adhere to a PRIP and reward great performance appropriately. I have seen instances where the client will invent reasons not to pay something that's been hard fought for and for obvious reasons that is not healthy either. At the end of the day, your media agency is in business. 
It's, it's, it's in business as you are, and, and if you don't respect it, it's going to find difficulty respecting you. And if you don't pay it properly, it's not going to invest in you. Um, so that doesn't really lead to what we're trying to get to. Um, ensure that your agency understands any relevant corporate governance guidelines or affiliation with industry bodies. Uh, <laughs> Marketing to children is one that I have experienced um, myself and which is why it's on the chart there. This isn't something that comes up very often, but when it does, it can be really painful. Um, many years ago, I worked with a large FMCG grocery company and we were marketing a product that could be consumed by both adults and children. And um, pester power in the media strategy in agreement with the client was, was inherent in what we were doing. We checked that the ad had a G rating, we allowed a small proportion of bonus airtime into children's programming, which unwittingly contravened the company's global marketing to children policy. Which actually probably would have been fine, but when a random consumer picked up the phone and complained, all hell broke loose, and it really, really wasn't pleasant. Now, look, of course, in this case, there's fault on both sides, frankly. I mean, you know, from both a client and agency perspective, in terms of fully understanding the protocol involved, but it was a really valuable lesson to me. Um, about the importance of the media agency being clued in and being given full knowledge on compliance up front about any relevant issue so that situations like the one I've just outlined can never occur and you know trust me you really don't want those situations to occur. Um, let's think about commercial behaviours, articulate your business strategy, your bigger business strategy, help your agency to help you in driving the bigger agenda, measure against that bigger agenda not just the media nuts and bolts. The more involved your media agency is in understanding your broader commercial strategy and challenges, the better place it is to help you drive your marketing efforts forwards and also communicate with other parts of your business. It isn't just about more sales, although, you know, of course more sales is obviously the end result, that's why we're all here. It can be about how other functions in the business are working with your team, it can be about new partnerships you've developed, it can be about product development or data sources, it can be about new marketing initiatives outside of media strategy that may or should have a bearing on how paid media might work. It can be about any of those things. It's not about drowning the agency in useless information or giving the agency too much, it's about balancing the critical nuts and bolts, if you like, with the broader commercial imperatives so the end result from your media agency is enriched by context. When it comes to dealing with site media sales networks, act as one. Look, this could just as easily have gone under collaborative, but I put it here under commercial because really we are talking about the commercial agreements between agencies and their suppliers on your behalf. Some clients like to be involved in commercial discussions between their agency and the sales networks from whom they strike these deals. As I mentioned before, it's good for transparency. I've never had a problem with it on the agency side, and frankly, any agency securing their relationship and understanding of where value is added should never have a problem either. But where it becomes difficult is where the client goes to the networks without the agency, and that does nothing except undermine the longer term negotiating position of the agency, generate resentment, uncertainty, and make the agency feel redundant. All of which, if you want to keep working with that agency and have it doing the best for you and extracting the best results, it's not good. Um, when dealing with commercially with external networks, you and the agency should be acting as one. Um, you know, I've, I've even been told of, I didn't experience this myself, but I've been told of a situation where the client had openly criticised and put down the agency in front of a sales work network in a negotiation, which is completely inappropriate and unacceptable behaviour. You know, the old cliche of the agency is an extension of your team applies here in reverse. When you're working with the media sales networks, you should be working as an extension of your media agency team. And together, you get to the best result. And let's have a look at some collaborative behaviours. Um, confront your challenges head on with empathy, share your expectations, set some clear boundaries and find the common ground before making the rules. I've worked with many agencies in my career and, and many clients who have allowed difficult relationships to fester because they tiptoe around actually what the real challenges are and it becomes passive aggressive. So a constructive confrontation of those challenges has to be the first step. I mean, this child maybe should have gone first. It has to be the first step, as well as a, as a, as a commitment to longer-term behavioural style. If you and your agency need to understand the good, the bad, and the ugly, you need you need to do that before you can truly start moving forward. Um, no subject should be off the table, and the discussion group should be as really as small as and, and as senior as it as it possibly can be. And there should be some careful setup from you to the agency as to your intentions. Um, it's critical that within this kind of thing you act with a degree of empathy, both here and in general, so that the pressures of the agency are recognised and, and the pressures they, they are under with you may be recognised as well. And the agency, of course, in return, should be expected to do the same. Be an active participant in driving your agency team.
structure and your personnel. Don't don't put up with square pegs and round holes. Um, the best single relationship I ever enjoyed with a client started with that client interviewing me for the job of running the account before I'd even been hired by the agency. You know, of course, this isn't for for everyone, and it's not for every position. It, it's it's really for the critical positions. But who the agency hires to do a job, it, it's ultimately the agency's decision. But you can be involved. You know yourself best at the end of the day. And as I've said before, you know, it's a, a lot of it's about chemistry. Often the agencies don't think to ask for client involvement because in the recruitment process, believing that it will cause irritation um, or interference. But any good media agency should welcome your involvement as a stakeholder should you decide to ask for it. And if personnel changes need to be made, be proactive, talk to the agency about it. Um, the first rule of a good performance review is that nothing should be a surprise. It's, it's completely counterintuitive to bottle up the stress caused by an underperforming or badly fitting member of your agency team. And a good agency will appreciate your honesty and will take immediate steps to re resolve any square peg in round hole situations. So I've used this phrase before, I apologise for the repetition, but loosen your tie on your side. Admit to your agency when things are hard. You know, make it clear to your agency that you want them to do the same. Whilst I'd, I'd always caution against becoming too single point sensitive on any one individual, all relationships in the world ultimately thrive on intimacy. And your, your media agency relationship, with, which often carries a day in, day out level of contact, is no exception to that. And, and so within appropriate boundaries, a degree of professional intimacy with your senior agency stakeholder can work on both sides to boost confidence, to relieve tension, to increase understanding and ultimately generate better loyalty, honesty, drive, motivation, all of which leads to better results. Accept and commit to the fact that high performance is a two-way street. Look, for sure, take your media agency to task where it's clearly at fault. Um, and the good agency lead, if you have a strong relationship, will, as I've said, stand up and count it in these cases anyway. But don't hammer it for something that's out of its control. Simple examples would be things like including a, blaming a missed sales target on the media buyer without proper consideration of the nuanced factors that may also have contributed to that. If the agency sees that where appropriate you have its back, then it's going to have yours. And, and you know, if you succeed, adopt a succeed together, fail together mentality, you can always work with your agency to evaluate performance, good or bad, afterwards. That's how the four C's could apply to you. There's obviously other things that we could cover, but we, you know, we only have so much time. Um, but in summary, look, there's no doubt that I started off by talking about the perception of the industry crisis. Yes, it's true. That to a certain extent, it is true. It's, there's no smoke without fire. Media agencies still are, in some quarters, regarded as the, as the estate agents of the industry, and sometimes for good reason. But in reality, away from the headlines, the relationships between media agencies and their clients, and vice versa, have just never been more complex. Um, both parties face huge challenges in a, in a consist, you know, constantly shifting landscape internally and externally. And frustrations and misunderstanding and lack of transparency are fundamental challenges affecting performance. So you could work with the four C's, consultative, compliant, commercial, collaborative. They can shape the way in which your agency behaves. You know, working in this way, you will be able to, act to, to, to extract optimal performance and increase the trust and transparency in the relationship that you have with the media agency. But to make them work, to make it happen in reality, you need to invest in them to commit to them, lead from them and uh, you know, apply them to your own part of the relationship. So thanks very much for listening. Look, um, we've, we've got some time. If there are any questions, I'm more than happy to take them. I will only answer the ones that I can. Um, don't hesitate to reach out to me via LinkedIn or via email at david at trinityp3.com. There are a number of them. Um, I think a lot of it is down to the way, to, to the individual's concerned. You know, every agency has um, a varying degree of skill set. Every agency has tools and, and tra of the trade. Every agency has a, a, a big, shiny um, strategic planning wheel. It's up to the individuals in question how they are operating those tools and systems, how they are interfacing with you and how they are understanding your business. Um, where that does not exist properly, um, no amount of shiny agency toolkits can get over that and um, you have to have that in place before genuinely high performance can exist. Now that needs to be facilitated and led by you as marketers um, as well as by the agency. There has to be some mutual um, opportunity there for that sort of thing to develop. Um, but yeah, aside from everything that an agency can do, um, it's that piece, it's how it, it's how it builds from that base that is, um, can be the biggest enabler to high performance. Okay, thanks very much.